I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met
Good morning, everyone. Glad you're here or whatever time of the day you're watching this. This is our worship service for the 23rd of August. And I just want to say a few words before we start. We're doing it differently today. I'm in the our studio right now recording this. And uh, we want to look to God's words as we look at John chapter 6. Would you bow with me as I pray? God, I pray now that as we look to your words, that, Lord, would we not only hear your words, but know them more. And thank you for these words now. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we are looking at the second part of Jesus. He's been talking with people, talking about himself as being the bread of life. And last time he talked about, uh, in the time we had before, about how Jesus had um, told them about man and how they had been with God in the presence of God, and yet they rejected God, that being the Old Testament and the manna that came from heaven. And, and he claims that he is the bread of life. And this is what they say as it starts in verse 34 
of John 6. It says, Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you have believed in me even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all who have who he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, This isn't isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? Who knows his father? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, Stop complaining about what I said, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me, and at the last day I will raise them up as it is written in Scripture. They all will be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who was sent from God has seen him. There ends God's words. Thank you today for listening to these words. And as we look at them, I want you to know that Jesus is trying to tell us that he is the one who's in charge. Yes, his father is telling him what to do, but he's only doing what his father is telling him to do. And I, I think it's so interesting as it, it says they wanted the bread of heaven early on in that description. Jesus just says, hey, I am the bread of life. And, and, and he goes on and he says this, it says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. And, and I think that's interesting because he's talking about metaphorically about when we accept Jesus in our life, there's a whole change that goes on, that we are satisfied in him and that not only our hunger, but it says our thirst will be that of being satisfied in God. And it's interesting that um, that is something that he does. He, he satisfies the, the desires of people's thirst back at the miracle of Canaan in, in chapter 2. And then we see also this miracle of hunger that he satisfies the people. And he's showing that he is the bread of life, that he came from God, that he had a miraculous power. And that's why our series is Miracles in Theology. And this is clearly him trying to explain what he's doing and why he's doing what he's doing to reveal heaven to people and to show that he came down from heaven. And this is where some people are kind of getting struggled with. And and I think oftentimes it's kind of like a puzzle piece. You know, I, I wanted to describe it this way. We all have ideas of how something should be and, and trying to put things in places. And as you put together a piece, a puzzle, uh, oftentimes you have a, a picture frame. Oh, dropped my... Uh, Bible there, um, a picture frame of, of how it's supposed to be, that picture, and so putting the pieces in the right place to get it to work right. And people had an idea of how God was working from the Old Testament and communicating uh, through the prophets and, and all, but this was very different because now we have something different, a different way of how to look at things, that Jesus is coming down from heaven, and he's from God, he's sent from God, and he's telling people what the Father wants them to hear. And, and that's hard for them to hear because they're not used to that. This is different in what's going on, and they're being challenged in terms of how they frame things. But the same is true with us. We understand things from a certain point of view, and I think one thing our culture is doing better at, 
I will affirm, is that we need to acknowledge we have a certain limited frame rate. There's only cer certain things that we see, and we can't see the vastness of our culture, uh, I mean, of this world, because our culture has limited somewhat of our vision and, and our experiences. And if we think that only through our experiences we can understand everything, the reality is we can understand everything because we will never experience all those things here on earth. But let's also realize that if we um, can even experience most of the things here on earth, the reality is God is much more vast than that. He's the God of the universe. This is the God who can do all things. And, and, and to think that we somehow can understand God fully, uh, that's not true. But one thing we do know is that God loved us and he sent his son to be here on earth. And why was that? So that he could be the bread of life, that he could show us what it means to be satisfied in God through his son, Jesus Christ. Because God, through his son, uh, is a part of the Godhead, the three in one. We believe that God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And, and God the Son is was present there. And he's telling us what is going on and how he's uh, the Father wants to use him and to not only to satisfy our, our, our life desire. And that's one of the things that we need to realize is that here on earth, people are always wanting their itches to be scratched, shall we say, the temporal things. But Jesus, I didn't come to just feed you um, just a temporal thing. I came to you to give you an eternal thing. And that's the other part. The Jewish people who who were following God, or at least trying to understand God, they saw from a blinder spot, from a certain viewpoint, that Jesus had, was going to come, or this Messiah would come to be just the king of Jerusalem, to focus on the Jewish people. And God is much bigger than that. God is the God of all people. And that is important for us to see and to know. And so today, as we see this, we see that Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And it is not limited to just to some people, it's to all people. And as we realize that uh, in terms of physical building, uh, terms of how many people that can come uh, in a physical building, it's limited. Now, though, now that we're being a lot more... Um, overt in terms of letting people hear the good news in the internet. Anybody can reach it as long as you have an internet connection and uh, some way to read that. There, we're opening up the gospel of God is actually getting out further than it ever has before in talking to people and letting them know that Jesus is the bread of life. And so how does this apply to us today as, as we think about this, that Jesus is the one who has come to shape us and to, and to make us realign us so that we stop thinking in terms of a certain point of view? And I, this is a challenge for me, but I'm going to say it anyway, and that is that I think for some of us, we are allowing the world to, to define the way in which we think, and we need to back up a little more and see from a biblical perspective, from a, I think, a Christian perspective, that God wants us to see something bigger. He doesn't want us to just see from our cultural point of view. He doesn't want to just see from our political kind of view. He wants to see us something bigger, and that's a Christian, God-centered view, and that God is working, and that even though there are struggles and strains going on in the world right now, and, and we want to understand them, so we see them some, from certain points of view, let's back up a little bit and see the bigger picture, and that God is God. It seems sometimes random things are happening, and, and yes, from our limited understanding, they seem that but we need to remember that God is in control. And, and how that works, I can't fully grasp, but I can tell you this. If we allow God to be God and not allow ourselves to be hindered from a, a, a temporal view, but rather from an eternal view, we see the trajectory of where God is going, that there will be chaos, there will be uh, consternation, there will be people who are going to question us as Christians and say, why, are, why is this going on? How do you understand that? And that we have an opportunity to share that we believe that God is the God of hope, that he has a plan. He has a future for all those who love and know him. And that's why Jesus says later on, he says, hey, you know what? 
I'll feed you. I'll give you something to drink. But one thing I will not do is I will not lose anyone that comes to me. If you come to Jesus, if you accept Jesus into your life, believing that you need him in your life, you need to admit that you are a sinner and that Jesus says, I will forgive you of all your sins if you believe in me and trust in what I do for you, you are saved. You are established in him. And this is why it's so wonderful. And we find such great hope in the bread of heaven. Just as the people of Israel were for 40 years in the desert, were not needing food because God gave it to them each day that they were there, except for the Sabbath day, that God gave them their bread. And on the, sab- on the day of Sabbath uh, before, they would be able to have it for two days. We need to realize that our bread, our understanding, our full uh, complement of what, how we're to live is t- to be found in the scriptures and that we are to trust Jesus and we are to trust God. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't uh, go about buying things. It doesn't mean we don't go about thinking through things here on earth, but it means that we see back up a little bit and see from a bigger perspective rather than just a political perspective or a cultural perspective. We need to see it from an understanding of what God's going to do. And God, he is in the midst of changing people's hearts. And there are people who have dabbled in Christianity or dabbled in what it means, but they have not put their full trust in him. And that's where we need to understand that Jesus is calling everyone to trust in him. And there are some people who are going to walk away. They have will not trust in him. But for us who love and appreciate who Jesus is, we can have a knowledge knowing that he will not disappoint us and that even though on this earth there will be hurts and there will be pains because sin entered in, Jesus paid the final price, the ultimate price of death on the cross and that his resurrection from the dead showed that he had power over death and hell and that he has given us life, life to know that whether we live or whether we die, we have Jesus in our heart. And today, the Holy Spirit is with us. He is telling us how to live. He's giving us directions. And one of the ways we can do that is by sharing that what we have. And I think one of the things that we need to really think about is not so much about worrying about hoarding things to ourselves, but how do we distribute? How do we give over things to God so that he could use them and find ways. Just like that little boy who had two um, loaves of bread and five fish, he had enough for himself, but he gave it over to God and look what happened. It fed a multitude of people. And couldn't that be a part of we as a church at Anoka Covenant Church that we have certain gifts and talents that we can put together that can feed a complement of people spiritually in a way that would nurture. And even some of the people we never see uh, that we'll see in a physical building, we will be able to minister to on an internet level that we'll never see. But yet we know that God is faithful. God's going to do what he's going to do. And I'm very thankful that today, that when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, we can know what that means because we know that ultimately our nourishment is not about here on earth. It's by doing the will of God. And that's what Jesus says. He says, my back when the disciples come back to him and, and, and give him some food because he was famished, he says, my bread comes from doing the will of God. And so today I want to challenge you to remember that God has given us the bread of life is Jesus and that by doing his work, by doing his will, we are being fed spiritually. And yes, that doesn't feed our body, uh, our physical body, but it does something better. And that is that it gives us a perspective of eternity that's forever with him. And so today, let me leave you with this. Jesus is calling you to trust more in him, 
to trust more in him. And how do we discern that through his Holy Spirit speaking to us? And as we welcome people into our lives, yes, sometimes we get to know people in new ways. And especially during this COVID time, there's a lot of things we're more distancing ourselves. But I also want to challenge you to think about praying for others who maybe you're not on a regular basis talking to, but just letting them know that God loves them and that God has more for them in the future. Thank you today for listening in. And let me close with a blessing upon you. Lord, may you be the bread of life to all of us who know and love you, Jesus. And may we be assured of our understanding of that today. And God, if there's anybody among us today that's hearing to these words today that says, I don't know what that means. God, would your Holy Spirit convict them of their sins and to show them that, God, you don't just want to leave them there of just showing them that they are people who are sinful as all of us are. But God, you want to forgive them. And the way that you show that is by saying to them, admit your sin and come to me, all you who are weak and weary, and I will give them rest. And that if we admit our sins, that God, you say you are faithful to forgive us of all of our sins. And that God, you did not sin through your son, Jesus Christ, that you have given us new life. And I thank you today that we have new life in you because we have accepted that, we've admitted that. And Lord, we live in the reality of our future, not in our past, that God, we long for the day when you will come again and we pray that it would be soon, that God, we would delight in your presence and thank you that we live towards eternity. And may you be glorified now. And Father, be with us as we go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for coming and being with us today. We will continue on as next week we'll continue on with our miracles and theologies. Lord's blessing on you now. Bye-bye.